So now we are getting to the power supply configuration of our panel meters. As you know, I'm doing this video because people ask me about panel meters. And obviously in the panel meter, there's both a volt meter and an amp meter. And they can be configured in two different configurations. The first one I'm showing here. This has the voltage across our power supply and uh, the amp meter in series with the load. Obviously, we would like to measure uh, both the ampere and the voltage correctly. But in case this amp meter has a very high input impedance, we will have some voltage drop in the amp meter and the voltage that we measure here will be slightly higher than the voltage that we measure here. So for this configuration we have to be careful that the internal uh, impedance of the amp meter is not too high. The other configuration has the amp meter in series with the power supply and the volt meter across our load. In this case we will obviously measure the voltage across our load correctly in all cases. But because there's flowing current through the voltmeter, in addition to the current flowing through the load, the amp meter will measure a little bit too high a value. And now just to recap, I'm showing both configurations at the same time. Uh, the first one is uh, always measuring current correctly, and the lower one, number two, is always measuring voltage correctly. And the question is, which one should we use? And to answer that question, I will take a look at the panel meter that I bought off of eBay and try to get an idea about the internal resistance of the amp range on that meter and the internal resistance of the voltage input on the same meter. Once we know these two values, we can uh, choose which one we should use. Okay, and uh, I hope you can see what's happening here. The lighting conditions are not too good in my lab right now, it's quite late at night. But basically what I've done is that I have removed the connectors here. There was an amp, the ampere input connector and there was a voltage input connector up here. And I have uh, removed both. On top of that I have removed the up amp here so I can look at the traces underneath to figure out what the input configuration looks like. As I told you yesterday, and uh, maybe you can see that better today, is that there is a shunt resistor on the board. The shunt resistor is this metal uh, bridge here and as we measured yesterday it has an impedance of 0.1 ohm but anyway we have 0.1 ohm which is the same as in the example I was using uh, when we were discussing the theory now where this meter differs from the moving call meters I was discussing um, in the theory section uh, it actually has a very high input impedance on the voltage range and uh, basically the signal comes in here there's a yellow um, wire on the connector. Comes in here, goes through here and directly to this resistor. It bypasses the R amp. The R amp is only for multiplying uh, or amplifying the voltage across the shunt resistor here. Um, so that it matches the voltage input range for the A to D converters in our um, microcontroller. But um, the voltage comes in here, goes through a resistor here and the voltage divider up here. Because remember the the board is five oops. Because remember the board is five volt supply, and uh, the input is up to thirty volts. So we have a voltage divider between this resistor and uh, this trim part here. Uh, but anyway, this resistor is two hundred and seventy kilo ohm, and uh, that is the input impedance of our meter here. So as you can see, for modern uh, panel meters and modern volt meters, the input impedance is much higher than uh, for moving coil equipment. And uh, that is the real benefit of digital meters these days. But anyway, this is what we got from our real life panel meter. And um, let's go back and uh, look at the papers and uh, figure out which configuration we should use. And we're back again. And uh, if we look at the two configurations, it is very obvious that we need to use configuration two because the current flowing through this voltmeter is so low compared to the load. We have an input impedance here of 270 kilo ohm, which is uh, generally way higher than the load here. So the percentage of current running through this meter compared to the current running through the load is, is uh, practically zero. So we have to use uh, configuration number two. Now this is the block diagram for our panel meter. 
and I've written all the internal resistors and all the wire colors here. The ammeter has a shunt value of 0.1 ohm and I've drawn the red and the black wire connection to the amp meter. For the voltmeter it has an input impedance of 270 kilo ohm and I've written the colors of the two wires here. The red wire on this connector is for the power supply to the meter. This is typically around 5 volts or above. You can actually connect the yellow wire to the red wire if you want to measure voltages above 5 volts. If you want to measure voltages below 5 volts, you need a separate 5 volt or above power supply on this red line here. So that the voltage on the yellow line here can swing all the way to zero without affecting the power supply. So anyway, the issue that we have with this panel meter is that they have a common ground. This black wire on the voltmeter is connected here to the black wire on the amp meter. And uh, this gives us a little bit of a problem. If we look at configuration number two, we see that the amp meter is connected to the power supply and not connected to ground, while the voltmeter is in fact connected to ground. So uh, the trick to using this uh, panel meter from eBay is to redraw this circuit a little bit and uh, you will see how that works. So what we end up with is a circuit that looks like this and uh, unfortunately it is not a type 2 and you have to be aware of that when you uh, buy this panel meter. So although the panel meter should preferably be connected as a type 2 connection we cannot do it because of this internal ground wire. So instead we have to connect it like this and we have to put the amp meter in series with the ground wire and uh, to measure current is actually not a problem but the ground to our equipment is raised a little bit because there's a voltage drop across this amp meter of uh, a few milliohm or maybe a few hundred milliohm so yeah our little panel meter we found that it works pretty well but we cannot configure it in the optimum way and uh, that's a little bit of a pity so because this panel meter uses the same power supply for both the amp meter and the volt meter, we have no choice but to wire it up as a configuration 1. If you need to wire something as a configuration 2, either buy 2 volt and amp meters or buy a panel meter where the amp input and the voltage inputs are isolated from each other. But for a cheap little panel meter than the one I bought on eBay here for 3 bucks, this is uh, not possible. So beware of that when you buy it and uh, otherwise I hope you found this video useful and uh, that you have some idea about how to connect panel meters in the future. So yeah that's it. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you again soon.